Hey guys, Luna here, and welcome back to Friends in 2 with our Salvation Lab. Last we left off, we had managed to get through talking with everybody and investigating everything. What we're actually going to want to do is try and free Cupram and Fokio. Probably horribly butchered their names, but it's okay. Now, I'm going to go and actually try and save them both. Now this is actually the same interface that we did that we had in the last chapter, which there's plenty to do to try and like look through the lore and all that of so what's there. <coughs> but my main goal, because this is a very very complicated system, just be focusing on following a little bit of a guide to try and get the mouse. So if you want to try and like get all the hidden lore and stuff of what's going on. You can just follow what I have been doing for this specifically. So, what you're gonna want to start off with is go to the encryption as transaction MD6 2. Did I type that wrong? Probably did. Encryption. S trans action MD6 dash two and then go to C D Fleets and the notes F. So then you have to type in the admin password, which my specific password G F R I L W then U admin info dot txt <coughs> So pass requirements. Remember all passwords should be met at the minimum complexity requirement. You seriously should know that the ca command ops password such as password GMD and you know that's an okay. Keygen daily encryption is handled by the Keygen system, so anyone who needs access to the secure document is going to need the, key the Keygen password so they all can pull down the info onto the terminal. Use the fleet, fleet Keygen server network for this command Keygen daily to download the encryption. Specialist DUI fleet command so uh, sort. So, and then you message.log. Message log to Kazak from Al Alex Lex. Final integration test. Subcommander, I have some concerns about. Uh, to Alex from Kaza. Final integration test. You will need to con continue as previously instructed. <coughs> blah, blah, blah. Try not to lose. Request to transfer our army support has been denied. So this is the message keygen password. Keygen. What? I did not want to do that. Gen. So I'm just writing this down so I don't have to look back up into my things, which... So apparently... Info... Yeah, so that's just... This. So, keygen... Password... Is K Q A Q Z B Q T. A lot of Q's in this. So then we need to do view recovery dot log and begin recovery corruption file. Helm Helm's been info files on cover all speed generate standby recovery done temporary Helm's access code is that mess so how comes in code is ft gl m8 zmp zmp x <coughs> and then encrypt Dash D encrypt CD fleets key gen server and then type 
type in the message log. So key gen password is K Q A Q Z B Q T. And then C D two three points one hundred dot one dot zero key gen so key gen dash D issuing daily encryption key for all secure documents remind your daily encryption to works five and the night shift contact shift mic commanded for further information and C C D backslash C D backslash and then encryption as transaction ND six dash four C D fleets Secure doc server. So ser secure document server password. So three WW M two EHM. U controller. Info encryption dash D encryption dot S secure AS two five six dash one CD fleets command operations. CD fleet underscore command operate Please follow this right CD fleet underscore C O M M A N D upper Okay, and then type in the admin info text. Oh, okay, so we need to actually look back. Admin info. So, so admin info is the admin info is the password vmed okay so i need to type in password vmed and then cd202 dot 190.3.1 command is connect personnel command disconnect personnel Helmsman access code is F T G L M eight Z M P X. As you finish the last part of the control sequence, you hear a loud series of hissing noises coming from the Helmsman's pod. Which did I turn down the volume? And did I not remember to turn it back up? Uh, give me a second. No, it's back up. A minute later, the front of the pod swings open, revealing a disheveled cup from suspended in some kind of harness, hooked up to various wires and things. Hey, nook fucker! Get me the fuck down! It takes like a ten minutes to get cup from out of the shades and unhook from the screen. 
Once he's down, he looks well, a lot better, but at least he's not hooked up anymore. Fuck you! I look great! Lol, 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 lol. Not sure how you'd get that far, but hey, you're just wondering something. Are you. Why are he and Fucker wearing those jumpsuits things? Looks kind of like a camp council at a discount summer camp. The kind that gets into pr petty rivalry with the ca camp across the lake. This noob never heard of a uniform, lol, lol, lol. You think we get to choose? Lol, nope. Okay, yeah, that's a pretty good point. So, what now? Go get Fallout, you stupid shit. Be me. Go to where Fall is. Wait for stupid bulge face to fix this. Ah, I see you've begun the routine maintenance procedures. You notice that he winks at you. Uh, yeah, right, maintenance. A normal thing for someone like you to be doing. Make sure you don't get caught. And make sure you leave this ship and everything in it alone. Personnel can be easily... misplaced. A simple error of filing or loss due to malfunction. Exactly, exactly. But physical hardware, that's another matter. What a fucking gaper. Gaper full of shit. Excuse me. La 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 la. Nothing. Precisely what I thought you said. Do what you must, but return promptly. Well, carry on. You should maybe investigate the ship thoroughly and talk to everyone you can. Maybe find some way to get Fulcrum and Copper Mouth. What's up with the plan Dumbine? It's a matter of efficiency, you see. Specifically, maintaining the efficiency of the controller. You see, a controller cannot maintain their own energy and require a constant feed from the ship in addition to standard nutrients. After a while, about five sweeps, the controller's energy use will... exceed their value. Oh, you know this is going. A jet nods solemnly. Once that threshold is crossed, the controller will be swapped for a new one and... disposed of. Simic feels like it's gonna twist up in a knot. Before I go to the fire control, I'm just gonna see if there's anything else to talk to anyone. Guard post, guard dock exterior, and I'm gonna talk to him, so I guess it's just fire control. So it looks like we're wrong about something. What stuff. does that mean? The ship, once it's underway, it's just not going to be gone forever. They need to dock in space stations and planets in order to resupply for the crew and, uh, change out the controller. Marcy nears her eyes and looks at you pointing That doesn't change anything. Even if I knew where they were docking and when, how would I get there? Do you have any idea how big the Empire is? No, but... not really. Marcy rose her eyes as a sense of self-evidence. Obviously. But at least it gives you some tried free folkery. <laughs> yeah, so next is encryption. F. Actually, dot S. Secure. E S256. Dash one. Again, which I don't understand. They have no idea how people would be able to just know this. Leads. Command operations. And admin info is the GF R I L W. Wait, C D. Leads dash command operations. CD underscore fleet underscore command operations. And then that's G F R I L W. This is the admin info. Oh wait. Password EMED. And then it's password EMED. So it's password 
G M E D. That's <coughs> what? C D leaves come command operations password G M E D. Right, that's the password though. Password G M E D. Maybe it's the C D Goodies underscore C O M N A N D O P E R A T N S S Word G M E D. Okay. And then I'm gonna try G F R I L W. <coughs> okay. I don't know why either these two are not working. This is because we just did this with connecting to the secure um, let's see so double checking password from the thing at Specifically says admin info txt node password gmed password gmed password gmed right that s secure a e s two five six dash one right encryption dot s secure a e s two five six dash one that's that was it i was just didn't realize I didn't get into the thing. D Connect with that. And CD202.190.3.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.
Encryption. Like as. Okay, encryption as a D. Quit. Need to go back to Kingsman Control. So controller. Okay, so let's see. Crypt. Deck S transaction and D six dash four. Shingo S transaction and D six dash four. Let's see if I can copy and paste this. Obviously, this is misspelled. Got that. So, CD fluids secure doc server. And then, secure documents, <coughs> which is free WWM2. E H N U controller dot info Let's see so hardware access code Specifically, the hardware access code says B A F R O Q V D five B. Then encryption dash D encryption dash S. So B six. Here, AES two five six dash one encryption dash S here AES two five six dash one CD fleet commit. Leads underscore command operations. And this is the admin info, which is password G N E D. And this is CD two o two dot one ninety dot three dot two. Dash this command. Dash disconnect personnel. And the code is F A V at A F R zero Q V D five V. Oh well, so everything just kind of skip forward. Okay. <laughs> so you hear now the now familiar sound of the containment pod door opening, launching, and releasing, and then you see Folkale suspended in the same kind of furnace that Corporal was. She's breathing heavily. Looks like she's in pain. Folkale, you want me to get the heck down? You, Corporal, and Marty help Folkale down from her shame. 
When she's completely unhooked, she leans heavily on Corporal. You know what? These are just made for each other. They're both crappy, awful people in a lot of ways, but the kind of crappy, awful people who have a strange kind of charm to them. Hey, d dummy, you got something to say? You're just gonna say it a little, a little? Okay, maybe not charm exactly. Look, you need to talk to them. You know. You know that they both want to get out of here, that much is like given. Fulker and Corp on both have eyes suspiciously, but they'll interrupt. Do you have any thoughts of either how they're gonna get out or what they're planning to do afterwards? Fuck shit up, Corp says. Wait, was that an answer to the first question or the second? Yes, Fulker says. Okay, cool. Now, glad to know that they're on put five solid seconds in this one, but maybe consider escaping for good. Expecting more mockery at this point, but that pretty much seems like these two whole thing. But Fulcro and Krupprom are looking at each other quietly. Uh, you're not joking. No, you take a minute to explain once again how the whole thing with their powers works. And you got a lot of time to practice this speech, and honestly, you're getting pretty good at it now. Fuck the Empire, we're leaving. Good thing you're, yeah. <laughs> Okay, this seems seem way too easy. You're expecting them to push back a lot more on this, especially Kerpum. He seems pretty excited about the whole idea of being Empress's helmsman. Not the Empress. Trizza. No. Oh. There is something in this face that you can't quite put your finger on. It's almost like sincerity. Okay, so why is he so willing to give that up then? Trizza's not okay. Not fucking stupid. I saw the shit. Mm. Not gonna be her gonna be her. He doesn't explain this further, but you figured it doesn't matter. He's on board, and that's guessing that his Mara is not hooked up to this crappy spaceship is gonna help with that. You take that back about the spaceship. <laughs> not her fault she's built like this. Okay, sorry. I was struggling with ideas of actually getting these two out of here. You got some contacts gonna help him hide it out until you can figure out your situation, but it doesn't seem like they can try to leave just walk out of here. Easy, we make an explosion, blow up the ship, walk right out. <coughs> Marty walks over for where she's standing across the room, and the look on her face, it seems like she's basically everything you just said. Not sure about this. No! There's no way we're doing that! <sighs> there are people <coughs> in this facility. I'm not going to trade their lives for yours. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Lolololol, fuck them! They knew what this was. Marty glares at Corporal. I'm not gonna let you do this. Not unless you have a way to keep them safe. There is a way. Maybe. Mm, which is? Well, you're all over ears. The idea of blowing up a whole bunch of people in order to cover their escape doesn't exactly appeal to you. Emergency alarm in the launch control center. Lol, yeah, yeah, yeah. Evacuation alarm and shit. That sounds pretty good plan, so what needs to happen anyway? We can prep to blow up the ship. You need to sound the alarm. Okay, sure, you can do that. <coughs> Hopefully. Cut, Fulcrum, Cropum lead you to the maintenance access hatch while Marty goes to find Chloe and explain the plan to her. Hopefully that won't end in a complete disaster. Here it is, road to freedom. Or whatever, hoof beast shit. Lol, just climb up and across the top! Yeah, you're not sure how you're gonna figure that one out. Sounds like another you problem. We've got shit to do. Okay, this is good. You gotta climb up on top of the starship and then work your way across the control center you've never been in before and find something you never use. To make sure everyone evacuates before something really bad happens. They won't clown the specific, but you feel like blow up the spaceship is pretty universal language. Begin to long climb into darkness, taking each wrong at a time as you make sure not to look down. Can't help but dwell on Kerprom said it was saying, but there's strange comments about the heiress to her pethas. You've been seeing her weird post and shitter this whole time, but what does Kerprom know that you don't? Or what he did see? It's not important right now. You gotta focus on doing your job. Soon enough. Soon enough for what? What are you going to do? How are you going to help these people? You've been down this path for five night cycles now, and you're not really any closer to figuring out how to get your powers back. Honestly, it seems more and more like you just won't ever get them back. It's depressing the thought. <coughs> Fortunately, the top of the ladder interrupts your increasingly mundane self-reflection. Top of the warship is a long, narrow, gauntly that extends all the way toward what looks like the town in the distance. 
We're assuming this is your eventual goal. The launch control oil center. Just need to go here. Oh, what the heck? How do you see and he looks pissed? Your whole body goes limp and your head hits the ground hard and everything goes black at all once. All around you the world swims loose currents co cohe and loses coherence as you slip away. You struggle to hold on to keep that small part of yourself that lets you survive and then that's gone to you. Oh, it's him again. You know, you're actually getting kind of tired of this, of looping back again and again, trying to change things again and again. Why does it have to be so hard all the time? Sometimes it almost feels like accepting the Empire would just be an easier option. Yeah, I can see how that might be appealing on one level. Just to, give, just to give up and let yourself live with the way things are, right? Yes, they're finally getting it. It's so hard all the time. It's not real. You know that, right? Everything you have to know that. Maybe it feels easier to give up, but you know that's an illusion. That is a machine feeding your blood off the blood and bodies of everyone that's a part of it. So what the heck do you do? Salvation, revolution, these same two choices that feel, feel equally flaw false. What's the right choice? Well, that's an interesting question. The two women briefly talk to each other, their voice is too low for you to hear. You don't get the sense that they're pondering your question so much as they're trying to decide how to break the news to you. Finally, they turn back to you. There isn't a quick choice here. There are two options that spin into an infinite of possibilities. Have you stopped to consider why Doc Shrike tried to kill you in the first place? Why you might be hiding there? That thought had crossed your mind. You had to understand why it would matter if everything is a part of Doc Scratch's plan and his eventual death and birth of Lord Engel should all be determined. Then why did he care what you did? Why did he try and kill you? If that outcome is inevitable, why did waste energy? Perhaps somewhere of that infinite possibilities, what an what inevitable what's inevitable has changed. You begin the long climb up into darkness, taking each wrong time, and then obviously, and back up to. <laughs> Holy crap! What the heck? Adrius is advancing on you. His hands crackling with psionic energy. He might not have to cut uh, cut as a helmsman. He's powerful, and right now he's mad. You. Traitorous coward! You insignificant worm! You thought I wouldn't find out what you're doing! I was willing to accept your plan to retrieve our controller and helmsman, but the ship? Uh, you're harmless. Harmless? Don't make me laugh! You're clearly on behalf of the enemies of the Empire! Well, you ran that comment that actually. Why is he so enthusiastic about the Emperor and our Empire? It seems, seems like last time you talked to you didn't care much about them at all. Have you considered that maybe I've changed my mind? Now, give me one reason why I shouldn't strike you down where you stand. Because you came here with Konya. I drew a raise in my brown fan. Connell, you would invoke the name of my mate sprit, knowing full well that it would cause me to hesitate. Yes, that's the whole idea, to get him to stop trying to kill you. I still haven't made a firm decision in that regard, actually. So what you came here with my mate, Sprit? So what? Uh, she's trying to leave us hmm. here. Perhaps you have a point. But you do understand that my mate, Sprit, and I aren't bound together. We are, in fact, two distinct people. But what about all the time they spent together before the Empire split them up? What about the fact that the Empire split them up in the first place? If you're going to try to appeal to my sentimentality, you're wasting your time. Actually, you're thinking of appealing to uh, his self-preservation. What in the name of the Empress are you babbling about? Do you have any idea who I am? Yeah, he's just on the pawn in the system. Jarek grits his teeth and scowls. How dare you! You speak down to me as if I'm some simple technician! My power is beyond the comprehension of your foolish mind! So what happens if he, when he's not useful to the Empire anymore? What? I just dispose him like Kokyo. Andrea stops and stares at you for a moment and actually think you might have gone through to him. My usefulness to the Empire. He's got no, even someone like him, someone who's in a position that they're okay with, they're still ultimately serving at the whims of the people who don't care one bit about them. You know what? No. This is absurd. God damn it, but the Empire is horrible. He has to know that, right? Of course! You think me a fool? But what is the alternative? 
to burn our planet to satisfy those who would defy the Empress's divine will. Behind you, the sounds of the access hatch bang open and quickly turn to see Fulker and Kroplum sitting in. Well, what the fuck? We set everything up. Time to go. No! This madness ends now! You can feel the electricity burning in the air as Kroplum and Drea let loose their respective psionics loose. You quickly run back to Fulker, yelling at the top of your lungs. Before you can actually form a coherent idea of what's happening, Fokka runs over to the where, where Ajiyaz is standing and grabs the back of his arm. You can see the energy fade from his eyes almost immediately. Fucking stop this! She's right, the ship's about to explode anyways. He was so busy worrying about what you were doing that he wasn't paying attention to anything else. Not to the ship, not to his own mates. Friend. What are you talking about? What the hell are you bringing up Coddle for? Does he think that you just showed up randomly? She's on the run from the Empire now, too. Drea's frowns and shakes his head, but he doesn't respond. How can he be this ca callous? Doesn't he care about anything other than upholding his l the lie that the Empire is based LOL? On? Get fucked! Okay, he's really not helping here. Drea pulls away from Fokia's grip, but he doesn't make a move to try and start using his psionics again. I will admit that I perhaps knew more about my mate Sprit's motives than I let on. I underestimated the scope, however. Very well. You, strange friend thing. Come with me. The rest of you can make whatever preparations are necessary here. What manner of insanity has gotten into them anyway? Or you, for that matter? Oh, there's a lot of things that I don't really want to get into, to be honest. Look, you need to stop with this. You know how to get them all off world. Them? I'm not interested in staying with those reprehensible gremlins. I intend to follow whatever path my mate Sprit has chosen for herself. Her vague comments about being able to leave this planet were not unappreciated. And she sighs. <sighs> Perhaps you're right. What use is my loyalty to the Empire when it gains me nothing? Perhaps some of that old opportunist still lives on within me. He smiles and shakes his head. In any case, if you want to sound the alarm, you will need to engage the sequence on the control panel over there. Simply enter the access sequence into the emergency security system, and the alarm will alert everyone in this facility and give them time to get clear. I believe you should be able to find the needed information on the server somewhere. But be wary. You likely only have a few short minutes left. Oh, okay. Um, so, encryption.s secure AES 256-1 CD fleet operations <coughs> password GNED CD and password GNED <coughs> Wait, 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 wait. God, of course I'm going copy. Okay, password, GNED, and then CD 205.105.1.1, commands, dash, set, alarm, at, admin info text, which is the um, password, GNED. All throughout the com- uh, All throughout the comp, you can suddenly hear the blaring of the alarm to sound. So yeah, that seems like a good time to get back out. Which is good. Agreed. Follow me. You rush back along the gainty holding tightly to the handrail toward the access hatch leading back down to the ship. Down into the darkness, much more punctured by the scream of the alarm as you practically slide down the ladder to the bottom. 
I trust you know your way back from here. I need to find my mate, Sprit. Well, heck, it looks like you gotta remember how to get back. It doesn't seem like you got a lot of time either. Upper left, let's go! Up. Right! Gotta go up! And to the left! Gotta keep running! I wish I could sprint! You stumble out of the dry dock and back toward the fleet depot. depot. You have no idea how much longer you have. Your legs burn and ache, but if you stop now, you're definitely gonna be dead. Run by the guard post. Careful not to let your mind linger on what happened there. There's only one thing that matters right now, and that's getting the heck out of there. Run. <coughs> you reach the hill above the base and you can see trolls all milling around, looking confused. Reminds you of, for some reason, a school fire drill. You're not even sure if you ever went to school. In the distance, you feel something is waiting, a potential energy about to explode, and then it happens. The fireball is massive. The heat is so intense you can feel even way up here. Down below, the entire compound, from the heart of the dry dock to the edge of the depot, is consumed in the fireball as the ship's reactor goes critical. The trolls around you stay in awe, and none of them care who you are or what you're doing. They're just lost. Just as lost as you. You fight. You, f you wander for the crowd for a while, hoping to run into your friends. Eventually, you stumble directly into Corporal Mufokuro. Watch your stupid ass. <laughs> lol, 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 lol. Their ass is so stupid. Stupid ass. After those two are just done laughing at you, apparently quite stupid, you quickly ask if the others are- They're right over here. You turn to see the hulking from Subconia leaning against Adria, the two of them grinning at you. Ah, I see you did in fact manage to make it out alive. Excellent. Hey, dumbass. Nice ass. Mm, yeah, that's definitely not gonna get a little bit hurtful. Anyways, what are they planning to do now? We'll stay with the rebels until such time as you can provide us a way off this planet for good. Yeah, you're working on that. Might be a minute. Well, don't take too long. Getting impatient. Yeah, I... Yeah, I get that. It's definitely a lot. <laughs> you're wondering if you could find your friend Marcy around too. We even call him to Ajea. Quickly move back to the crowd. After a while, you see you're standing amongst the others looking back to the base. Looks like you got out. Your tone is soft. She's not angry at you or anything. Just glad that you're okay. Hey, I appreciate you warning all these people. They don't deserve this life. They deserve a chance at something better. So you're gonna keep doing your thing, huh? Yeah, you don't really know what you're gonna do next, but you get feel these feelings. Expecting Marty to make them make fun of you for this, but he doesn't. Instead, she looks you up and down and on. I think I know what you mean. That lurking sense that something needs to be done. Good luck. I'm gonna stay with the rebels until you can come get me. But I know you have things to do first wander a bit more, pretty much aimlessly at this point. The crowd's so thick, but a lot of these trolls are starting to wander off or break into groups to talk to each other. You pass the guards in armor holding rifles and trolls weighing what looks like lab coats, and none of them pay you any mind. <coughs> out ahead, you catch a sight of one who stands out from the rest, someone wearing what looks like flight gear. There's something familiar about them. Oh wait, holy crap, is that- Oh my goodness! If it is my old friend! Holy crap, the cat? You haven't seen him in well, same two sweeps and change everyone else, you suppose. But he's looking good. He's got some kind of flight suit on that's quite stylish and looks like life in general is agreeing with him. Oh, my friend, how right you are. Life's been quite the peach lately. Matter of fact, I've had a bit of a chance to realize a dream of mine, if you'll care to come with me. Oh, yeah, sure. Worker leads you to a nearby field in the middle of you and you can see the sleek black ship. Is this his? Well, Ken nods enthusiastically. Sure is, my good friend shaped pal. Brand new T-405 atmospheric transport. Oh, neat. Well, hey, while you're here, you got an offer to make him. Would he like to, and this is purely hypothetical, leave Alternia forever? Well, Karen nods. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> nonsense. Why would I want to leave? 
Why, I've got everything I could possibly want right here. Oh, okay, but what about the horrible crushing weight of the Tuning Empire? The cash are... It's a bit much, certainly, but not something I worry about much. After all, I'm no frontline soldier. Uh, I guess that's fair. He tells you a little wink and gesture toward the ship. Atmospheric transport, my good friend. Ferry the good soldiers and scientists of the Empire to and from various planets. Just got done with a tour on the Ectora Tatus frontier conflict against the pirate stronghold. Messy stuff, but I stay above it all, eh? Heading up to the Spiralita soon to pick up some cargo. Okay, you don't think he met someone yet as really as peace with their role in the Empire, but what about his dreams, his dreams of flight? Oh, that. Well, see, atmospherics handle a bit differently than the dedicated antigrav frames. Useful when speed is of paramount importance, my friend. He grins and hooks up his hands into flight harness. Like running a team of Cerulean commandos in under enemy radar during a Class Delta storm. You know what? Maybe half the sentence means, but he seems pretty proud of it, so you smile and nod. Something inside you tells that you need to go with him to travel back into orbit. You've had this vague sense of guiding thread the whole time you've been back. As if someone is out there looking for you, and during that your story reaches like it's a good Well, again. I suppose I can't begrudge you one small favor. Normally, Imperial Procedure would be to report you, probably have you culled. New blood goes cold for a second, but the care grins and wings. No worries, my good friend. I won't tell anyone if you won't. You want to hitch a ride into the wild purple yonder with me? Why, you just hop on board. Yeah, you think you might just do that, actually. Inside the Vakir ship is lit and all dim red and can possibly be described as autissier, mind you, instead of a submarine from a movie, or the inside of a spaceship, also from a movie. Fair. You salt it over to what you assume is one of the jump seats and flip it down. This doesn't look like it was designed for comfort so much as rough, rough utility. Well, strap in good and tight. It might be a thing of beauty to fly, but it is not easy on the rear end. You put the shafts a little tight and grim ner nervously. So, what kind of ship is the Spilonda anyways? Hopefully a fun one, right? Preferably one where it's very chill and maybe some kind of violet blood enclave? Vakar laughs at you. <laughs> oh no, my friend! It's clowns all the way down! Well, okay then. You remember you promised Sabronia about how you would look for Kerkia and find a way what she's up to. So maybe this is a chance to make one or two things right in the world to make up for some harm you caused. Whatever you're yammering on about, I hope you're nice and comfy, because we're about to leave. <sighs> as ready as a love would be, I guess. <coughs> with that, Farquhar quickly climbs into the cockpit in the front, straps in with his own seat, and fires up the engine. Next stop, adventure! What adventure! You know what? Maybe you have another adventure for this being. Maybe you should just, before you have a chance to finish your thought, the ship lurches onto you, and you're on your way once again. Next stop, an adventure, or something like that. Unplanned obsolescence. <laughs> Ripcord beneath the veil of the stars. Found a life beyond the stars. Wanna see my progress? Heck yes I do. With that, I hope you guys will have a good day, night, week, month of your lives, and may the stars forever guide your path, forever might lead you into the future. And we'll be back next time on Volume 11. And I hope you guys, so I'll see you next time. Bye bye, everybody.